Welcome back to Fairy's Tutorials. Now, for the past few sessions, we have been looking at diet-related health problems and how it affects the health of individuals. Also, we zoom in on how these diet persons having these diet-related health problems affect the Caribbean. Right? We spoke of uh, human resource capacity being affected, government expenditure on health bills, and also how the disposable income of a family is affected. And by large, you may find out that these issues may also be faced by other countries. In this session, we'll be looking at somewhat of a solution, I would say, that may help persons or prevent them from, be from having diet-related health problems. So your task is to spell with me and let us discover together the topic of today's session. Awesome. So we'll be looking at dietary guidelines of the Caribbean. Stay tuned. In this session, we'll be looking at a definition of dietary guidelines, the importance of dietary guidelines, and also some basic dietary guidelines for the Caribbean. Now, what are dietary guidelines? Are you able to tell? Let's use context clues. So, the word dietary is coming from the word diet, right? And what are guidelines? Awesome. So now, what do you think are dietary guidelines? Let us see if you were thinking on the correct path. Dietary guidelines refers to a series of dietary recommendations from a nutrition committee. Now, this committee may consist of personnel from the Ministry of Health, nutritionists, and other health professionals and these guidelines are intended to improve health or to minimize the risk of persons developing diet related health problems right so they are a series of recommendation right of how to eat how to what to cut out what to include what to add more of right now let's continue why are dietary guidelines important? Dietary guidelines provide a framework to promote healthier lifestyle. Good. They are also designed to help citizens choose diets that will meet nutrient requirements, promote health, support active lives, and reduce chronic disease risk. Right? So, it is important, dietary guidelines are important because they promote healthier life, right? And by promoting healthier life, they do this by what? Informing the citizens of the nutrients that are required to meet their certain needs, to just promote health on a general basis, and to support active lifestyle, and to prevent what? The risk of developing chronic diseases. Awesome. Now, let us look what these guidelines are. So, we have seven guidelines listed here. Eat a variety of food from all the food groups daily. That's the first one. Next, reduce intake of fats and oils. Reduce intake of sugary foods and drink. Eat the right amount to maintain a healthy weight. Reduce intake of salty and processed foods. Eat more fiber. Make physical activity a part of your daily routine. And those are the seven guidelines 
of the basic guidelines of the Caribbean that we'll be looking at in today's session, right? Now, based on these recommendations and based on your prior knowledge on the types of diets that contribute to good health and well-being and also the types of diet-related health problems. Can you tell why these recommendations are vital? Right? So let's go again. The first one says to eat a variety of food from all the food groups daily. So right then and there it is telling us to have what? A balanced diet. And we must have the balanced diet so we choose the foods from from the different food groups but we have to consume them in the correct proportion next reduce the intake of fats and oils if we consume too much fats and oils what can happen what which diet related health problems can can we can become risk of having right we can have a risk of having if we consume too much fats and oils right so we speak of obesity and once there's obesity it leads to cardiovascular diseases it leads to diabetes because you may find out that all of these diet related health problems are related so once you have one you are prone to having more than one right so the next pointer is to reduce intake of sugary foods and drink which lifestyle disease did we look at or which diet related health problems we looked at that has a link between sugar consumption and our health right so we speak of diabetes good and remember as i said before from once you have one it's a possibility you're now prone or more at risk of having other lifestyle diseases or diet related health problems right also reduce intake of salty and processed foods right so salty foods those are high in sodium that may cause someone to be hypertensive right so we speak of hypertension and once there is hypertension you know there you are at risk of having a heart attack a stroke right or other cardiovascular diseases right the next one says eat more fiber good why is fiber important? And remember, fiber is one of those diets, a high fiber diet is one that contributes to good health and well-being. So eating more fiber will, will make you feel full for longer. Hence, it's, it prevents you from overeating. And sometimes based on the fibrous materials that are found in these foods, it helps to absorb the cholesterol or absorb the fat that is in the body, right? Make physical activity a part of your daily routine. Now, when we engage in regular physical activities, we burn calories, right? So remember, we also have to balance the scale with calories consumed versus calories expended. So whatever energy we put in our bodies, we need to expel it so that persons or we do not become obese, right? And the next one says, the final one, eat the right amount to maintain a healthy weight you just don't eat when you're bored right you eat when you have the you, you have the desire you feel of hunger right you just don't eat around the clock and we also manage what we eat only eat when it is necessary so you eat the right amount to maintain a healthy body weight good now let us look at how we can uh put these recommendations into practice. So eat a variety of food groups from all the food groups daily. What can you do, right? So eating a variety of food means eating different foods from within and across the food groups in the correct amounts, right? And as you can see in the picture on your right, it has uh, the different food groups listed there. So we have the legumes group, we have legumes and nuts, we have food from animals, we have fats and oils, we have fruits, vegetables, and also staples, good? And the main nutrient we get from staples is what? Carbohydrate. The main nutrient from legumes and nuts is protein. Main nutrient from food from animals is also protein. Fats and oils, we get fats. 
main nutrients from fruits is vitamins and minerals and also vitamins and minerals we get from vegetables good so you may find out that different food groups has have the different food groups will have different nutrients in them but those are the main ones right that we just listed and what you're supposed to do in order to eat a variety of food from all the food groups we have to what take a little staple take a little legumes take a little food from animals we don't only have chicken and chips hello which food groups would chicken and chips fall right so we'd have the chicken from the food from food from from animals and the fat that is used to fry it would probably come from fats and oils and also staples from the staple group so that is not balanced right we would want to limit the amount of fat in terms of even with the preparation we wouldn't want to go and fry something because you may find out that some of the food from animals also have fat content in it right so we have to take some, uh, get some on some of the fruits, some of the vegetables, staples, legumes, food from animals, and also fats and oil, which is very important. Fats is important, you know, guys, but it's a proportion. When we overeat, that becomes a problem. Good? Awesome. Now, number two, reduce intake of salty and processed foods. Good? So reduce the intake of cured or processed meats. So when you speak of cured meats, we may be speaking of meat that was uh, some form of preservative was done. And in this case, seeing that we're speaking of salty food, we know that salt may be added. So salt may be added in terms of salt fish, right? So the salt will pull the moisture from the fish, right? And you also have... Uh, salt mackerel some of the foods that are found in a solution in brine a solution of salt and water So we must we have to limit the intake of those type of foods also processed foods So the sausages the hams, right because they have to add salt to those foods in order for them to be preserved good similarly salt, uh, salt mackerel and sard sardines and sorry tin mackerel and sardines may also have some amount of salt in there to help to uh, keep in quality another thing you can do is to read labels to determine sodium content right so you don't just take up the food or you don't just read the label to look read the, the product to look at the price right you also read the labels to and look at the nutrition facts or the nutritional content find out how many sodium is in this thing is there any other nutrients in it is it just calories right so read labels to determine sodium content from foods before purchasing and reduce the amount of salt added when you're cooking good awesome and remember if we consume too much salt it can lead to it can lead to hypertension and then from you have hypertension you're prone of having other lifestyle diseases such as cardiovascular diseases and there are a range of cardiovascular diseases and also stroke right now reduce intake of fats and oils how can this be done so use methods of cooking such as roasting, steaming, grilling, and baking instead of frying, right? Also use low-fat dairy products. So persons may want to use skimmed milk or 1% uh, uh, fat milk or reduce uh, fat milk products on a whole or low-fat milk products on a whole. Also, you have to be vigilant that there are also food items that has invisible fats. So the fat is in the product, but you do not readily see it. So we have to be aware of those items. So we speak of whole milk, we speak of nuts, we speak of cheese, we speak of avocado, we speak of ackee, we speak of coconut. No, so it, you have to be very careful of the type of foods that we are consuming. Next, eat more fiber include more fresh fruits and vegetables in the daily diet as they are rich in fiber use whole grains for example whole wheat flour rice and also pasta good number five reduce intake of sugary foods and drinks now guys consume water and whole fruits rather than what carbonate carbonated beverages or we may say sodas 
or fruit drink with added sugar to them, right? So it's best if you consume water and you have the whole fruit. Now, even though the fruit is also is a little sweet, it is better than having additional sugar being added to to it, right? So you little teenagers, when you're having your fruit, you don't add any sugar, you don't add any salt, you just had, have it in a natural state as it is, good? And some adults are also guilty of this act, right? So reduce the number of baked goods, desserts, and candies eaten on a daily basis. And most of these products have simple sugars. So as soon as you're, you consume them, it is readily absorbed into the bloodstream. And by the time you know it, you have a sugar spike. By the time you know it, your insulin starts to function based on the amount of sugar that you're pumping into your body. You put the pancreas under pressure to produce as much insulin so that you can break down the sugar in the blood. Good. Six, make physical activity a part of your daily routine. So we speak of sp playing sports, uh, engaging in regular physical activities. If you're at home now during the quarantine, it may be hard for persons to go to gym, but you can turn on your television and you can go ahead and you do your exercises at home, right? And remember, it is very important for us to balance balance the calories that we intake with what is put out so we can't just be eating 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 and not exercising good i remember also exercising helps to strengthen the heart muscles and keep our body going and it feel, makes our body feel good and you feel healthy motivated and also you gain self-esteem so uh it lifts your self-esteem so uh engaging in regular daily routine physical activities is very important finally eat the right amount to maintain a healthy weight right and from you see this guys you know that we're talking about a balance between what is consumed versus what is expended and we do not overeat we only eat when we are hungry we don't eat because we are bored right so balance energy intake good as more energy in than out results in weight gain so if we're consuming and we're not exercising then there is a problem good and even if you tend to be hungry on a regular basis you may what consume foods that are high in fiber because those types of food keeps you fuller for longer versus a small bag of chips that is full of calories and by the time you know it by the time it's finished you're not even full but guess what the amount of calories that you're taking in would have been a problem in you gaining weight right now activity define dietary guidelines stay two importance of dietary guidelines Outline the dietary guidelines of the Caribbean. And finally, state two ways in which each of the following may be reduced in the diet. So two ways in which sugar can be reduced, two ways in which fat can re be reduced, and also two ways in which salt can be reduced. Also, you have made it to the end of the session. Remember guys, don't forget to like, also subscribe and most importantly share with persons who you know will find this information useful thank you for making it fairies tutorials